Hi, this is Mrs. Clark, and I'm going to show you how to code this gingerbread pixel art. So if you want to get this one, and you can code it along with me, click on the link, and you can get the gingerbread house. And I also have a set of 20 winter-themed ones. So you can also get the whole set. And this is a mystery reveal art. So that means people will be answering questions, and as they do, the pixels should be appearing. Here's an example of what I mean. This is a different one, but this is the type of project that we're talking about. So we're going to do the gingerbread house. And even if you have something else that you're coding, this video will still help you. You just want to make sure that you have already made your picture before we begin. So step one is to put it into 75% here rather than 100 so that you can really see everything. Step two is to click on these boxes and type out some questions. You want them to be very straightforward questions that have one solid answer. So type out your questions. There are 11 of them. So there are two down here as well. And then answer your questions. Once you have your questions and answers filled in, you are ready to start coding. We are going to be coding the answer boxes because that's what we want, is for someone to type in the answer that activates the code. If they get it correct, the colors appear. Therefore, you're coding this box, this box, this box, this box. You're not using the question boxes at all. When you are coding, you need to tell the computer three things. You need to tell it what box you're coding. You need to tell it what color you want it to turn. You need to tell it what the person needs to type in to make the code start. I said that you need to tell the computer what box you're coding. Well, every single box in this spreadsheet has a name. The way you name a box is you look at the column that it's in, and then you look at the row that it's in. This one is called B4. And the reason it's four is because this is a four, five, six, seven here, because it's a big box, but four is the first one. So you take the first one. So this one is called B4. This one is called B8, B12, B16, B20, B24, B28, B32, B36. And then let me show you the ones over here. This one is AA32. So you take the first letter, and this box is called AA36. Those are the boxes we're coding. So we're going to go ahead and start. Let's pick a color. I'm going to start with this red here, and I always click on the color first to find out where it's located. So it's one of the custom colors, second from the right. Okay, now I need to click on the box that I'm actually coding, and I'm going to open up the conditional formatting window. To do that, I click on fo uh, Format, Conditional Formatting. Okay, so I have my box selected. I'm going to tell it what color I want it to turn, which is this red. Now I'm going to write my code. My code is down here. I would suggest writing it down. It is equal sign, dollar sign column, dollar sign row equals answer. equals dollar sign and this box I'm coding is the red box and it is in column B dollar sign and it is row four so that's just my way of telling the computer what box it is and what that box is called equals and now I'm going to write in the answer in my case it is nine you're gonna write whatever you have in this box that people need to put in so for me, it's nine. So that's my code. My code is technically done. Let me show you. All I said there was that if someone puts a nine in that box, the box has to turn red. So that's the code. But the last step then is to bring these other reds along with it so that this box turns red and then these other boxes turn red too. So I'm going to do that last step. It is up here, it's called the range. 
I, ha I already have B4 to B7 in there, but I need to add the rest of the reds. To do this, I clicked on this little box here. It opened this window and I moved it over. I already have the nine box selected and now I want to add to it. So I have to hold down the control button or if you're on a Mac, hold down the command button while you select your other pieces. Otherwise it will forget the things that already got selected. So hold down control because that nine box has to stay in and I'm going to click on all of these reds. And you can see that it's keeping everything I click. As I add a new box, it doesn't get rid of the other boxes. That's because I'm holding down control. So I'm trying to collect all of this in one group. If you click one you didn't mean to, like I did just there, click on it again and it will deselect it. I have now selected all of my reds, so I'm going to take my finger off the control and I need to do three things. The first thing I need to do is hit OK on this range. The second thing is to come over to the code and click Done. And the last thing is to come up to the paint bucket and click Reset. That's really important. If you don't do that, then those will stay red no matter what. Okay, now I'm finished, but I'm going to test it out. So I'm gonna click somewhere else, come back to the nine and hit delete or backspace on your computer. Good. Now go back in and answer that one again. And you have to click off of it for the code to set. There we go, that one works. Delete it though so that it's not in the way and you can see what you've done and haven't done. Now look over here at the conditional formatting rules. You can see that if I click on the box I just coded, there is a code there. And when I click down to the next box, there is not. That's good, so you can see we coded one of them. Now we're gonna come down and code the next one. When you code your next box, you're just gonna click add another rule. And if you ever lose this window, you can open it the same way that we did before. I want to make sure that I'm always coding the answer box and I'm not coding one of these little boxes. So for my next box, let me choose a color. I'm going to do the light green and I'm actually going to see if I can find that green up in the paint bucket first. So it's one of the custom colors and it's in the middle. Okay, now I'm going to come back and click on that five box again. That's the one I'm coding. Come over to the right and click add another rule. I'm going to tell it what color I want it to turn. Then I'm going to write the code to tell it what box and what the answer needs to be. Equals dollar sign B dollar sign eight equals, and mine, it has to equal five because 25 divided by five is five. That's done. Now I'm just going to add all of the light greens from the picture. So I'm going to click on apply to range, move this over, and I need to press down on control. So I'm going to hit that button and hold it the whole time. And now I'm going to select all of the light greens. I'm finished, so I'm going to let up on that control button, and I need to do three things. I need to click OK on the range, done on the conditional formatting, and come up to the paint bucket and hit reset. Then I'll click somewhere else so that it's not selected anymore, and I will test it. Delete the five, put the five back in, and it's looking great so far. Delete these though so they're not in the way. Next, we'll do this box. I'm going to do the yellow. Let me click and find the yellow real quick. Okay, it's not a custom color. It's one of these normal ones down here, but it is the brightest yellow. So I think that I'll be able to find it. Now I need to click back onto Denver because that's the box that I'm coding and click add another rule. Click on the paint bucket and find that color. Now I'm going to write my code. I want to show you if, if your answer is a word like Denver, 
then you have to do something a little bit different. Let me show you what. This is normally how I would write my code. I put in the dollar sign B dollar sign 12 because that's the box. I have the equal signs and then I put in the answer. That would normally work. But do you see how it's not yellow over here? There's something wrong with the code. When your answer is a word like Denver or monkeys, you have to put it in quotation marks. So I just need to put a quote before and after and that's it. Now it's yellow, so the code worked. You don't have to do that with numbers, but if it's a word, you have to put quotes around it. Now I'm going to press down control and select all my yellows, making sure that that Denver box stays selected too, because I want that one to be included as well. If you have a big area, you can click and pull and select more than one. Now I take my finger off of control and I do my three steps. I click OK on the range, done on the code, then come up to the paint bucket and hit reset. Now I'll click off of it and test it. And you can see with all of these, look over on the coding window. As I click on the box, you can see the code that's there. And then you click on the next one and it's ready for us to add a code. Next, I'm going to do the lightest blue. And I need to just look at this and see if I can distinguish between the different shades of blue. It's not the end of the world if I don't get it perfect, but there is a lighter blue here and there's a few of them down here too that I'm going to try to use. Let me find that light blue first. It is the fourth one in. One, two, three, four. Now I'll go back to this box that I'm coding, add my rule and find that color again. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to write my code. Come all the way down to custom formula is and do equals dollar sign B dollar sign. This one is 16. And then remember, since it's a word, it needs to be put into quotation marks. It doesn't matter though if I capitalize that M or not. Now I'm going to add the range. Hold down control and I will select all of these super light blues. If I accidentally click on one of the darker ones or it's hard for me to tell the difference, it will not make that much big of a difference because this light blue is just here for shading. So I'm just doing the best that I can, but it does not have to be perfect. Now I let up on control. Oh, there's a couple more over there actually that I just missed. I let up on control and do my three steps. Click OK, click Done, Reset. I've done four so far. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to keep going and I'm going to do one color per box because there's exactly 11 colors and exactly 11 boxes. I am now going to speed up the video and do it a little bit faster.
Okay, we are finished coating our gingerbread house. I am going to exit out of this window. And when you're finished, it should look like this, but I'm going to fill in our answers and test it. So cool, so it is ready to go. I want to tell you one thing. Before you give it to somebody to work on, you need to delete your answers, which that makes sense. But there's one more thing you need to do. You need to make a copy of it because even though this looks like it's ready to go, I found a little glitch where if I give this to somebody, it'll flash the gingerbread house at them real quick and then disappear and it ruins the surprise. So just make a copy of it first. So name it in a way that'll help you remember it. And then give your copy to the people that you want to work on your gingerbread house. So thank you for watching. Remember, you can get all of these. If you click on the link, you can get this gingerbread house, you can get the Santa, and you can get all of these different winter ones as well.